då testar vi det här. Uh, welcome to 25 years of Barnes Corporation Youth Perspective for the Future. My name is Malin Wienberg and I will be your host for today. Um, so happy to see you all today again. How was yesterday? How are you feeling today? Everything good? You're all excited? Sounds great. I don't know how much sound testing you need. Debra, how it? Yeah. Va? Jaha. Du vill ses i profil. Aha, okej, okay, okej. Okay. Ja. Som jag rör på mig och sånt så slår håret lite i, men... Ja, perfekt.
Okay, okay, okay. Ah, yay! Here we go. And there the door is closed. Now you're all mine. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good? <laughs> Bright and shiny? Super exciting? Um, how was yesterday? Really nice? You guys up in the back? Are you feeling okay? Ready? So, once again, I would like to say welcome to 25 years of Barnes Corporation Youth Perspective. My name is Malin Wienberg. Most of you met me yesterday. It was a really nice evening to see all of you there. I think we had a really nice feeling, atmosphere. Uh, that is the foundation for this day today. Uh, as I told you, I will be your host for this day as well. And especially, I would like to say once again, welcome to Lulio. This is my hometown for almost 10 years now, so I'm very, very happy that you are here in Lulio as well. Today, we're going to celebrate 25 years of Barnes Corporation and, of course, talk about the youth perspective for the future. How can we create a stronger, common future in our region, people to people? What do we need to do, both on a political level and also, of course, on a personal face-to-face -face level? One thing that really helps us stay connected and to build relationships across our borders is social media. And right now, this conference is actually broadcasted live on Facebook so that everyone can be a part of this important day. Um, if you want to tell your friends or your colleagues to watch this conference, you can tell them to go to Barnes Corporation's Facebook page and there you will have the YouTube link. So share it with your friends that couldn't be here today so that everyone can be a part. If you want to post anything during the day and let me and my colleague and friend Lisa take part of that, you can use the hashtag BarnesYouth25. Uh, and that is what we really want. We want this to be a discussion. High and low, we want to take part of your thoughts and your ideas. So please, whenever you feel like you have a question or if there's something on your mind, use the hashtag and then Lisa will make sure that whenever the time occurs, we will lift your question and address it and talk more about that. It's important that we do this all together. Like I said, Lisa is with me. She's from the Norwegian Barn Secretariat. And she will take care of, of all the action on social media so that you can be safe that we will watch it and take care of it. In my team, I also have Henrik Blomqvist from the Swedish Foreign Department. And he's going to help me also take notes and make sure that I don't miss out on anything during this important day. Um, speaking of social media, me and Lisa was thinking like, what can we do? What is something fun that might um, start and get you going with uh, posting online? So we actually have an Instagram contest today. So by the end of the day, the best picture with the best uh, text will receive a special little gift from us. So get online. Use the hashtag BarnesYouth25 and be the lucky winner by the end of the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, some of you are probably wondering what the day is going to look like, so I'm going to describe to you shortly. We are going to start with a number of interesting speeches. After that, uh, a well-deserved coffee is served. Then it's time for our first panel discussion, and after that we have a delicious lunch waiting for us. You have already been divided into three groups. You know that, right? Yeah, I see a lot of head, head, heads going like that. That's good. Because uh, these three groups will discuss different subjects over lunch. We have uh, economy, environment, and socially different discussion groups that you will talk more over lunch. I actually think that is all you need to know for now. Um, any questions so far? No. Oh. Starts good. Uh, so it's time for me to introduce our first speaker of today. Anna Ekström 
Minister for Upper Secondary School, Adult Education and Training, and she's also the Youth Minister since the autumn of 2016. Prior to joining the Swedish government, Anna Ekström was Director General for the Swedish National Agency for Education. She's also been Chair of the Swedish Confederation of Professional Associations, State Secretary at the Ministry of Enterprise, Energy and Communications, and State Secretary at the Ministry of Employment. Anna Ekström holds, oh, there you were. <laughs> Anna Ekström holds the Master of Law from Stockholm University and has also studied history at Stockholm University. Very, oh, there you are again. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to go below, beside me. <laughs> uh, very welcome to Lulio and to the conference, 25 years of Barnes Corporation. Stage is yours. Thank you very, very much. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to open this, uh, as you said, very important conference. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, excellencies and uh, dear friends, dear Barons friends. For me, it's a great pleasure to have the opportunity to open today's conference. Uh, we commemorate 25 years of fruitful collaboration in the Barons region. And uh, everyone who took part in yesterday's really delicious dinner could uh, experience with their own minds that this is a region with great potential. It has so much beauty, stunning nature. The food is uh, f the kind of food that you don't find anywhere else. You have thriving enterprises, you have renowned universities, you have a strong entrepreneurial and innovative spirit. And for me, uh, I've visited Luleå frequently for, for almost 40 years. You can feel the difference between the Luleå a few years ago and the Luleå now, which is a town which is buzzing and where the feeling all around is that this is the place where things happen. Uh, some of us went to Luleå, uh, to, to the uh, high school uh, in Luleå this morning and, and talked with young persons, and they all of them told us that their dream was to uh, either stay in Luleå or the area or come back to Luleå and the, or the area after their education. And I hold my, keep my fingers crossed that they will uh, find a good life here. Now, uh, we are looking back to 25 years of fruitful uh, collaboration. And um, looking back at uh, 25 years, what is better than looking f uh, at the same time looking forwards towards the future? So there the youth perspective is perfect when we want to commemorate 25 years of, of uh, collaboration. Uh, promotion of the youth perspective is uh, a priority for the Swedish uh, chairmanship of the Barents Euro-Arctic Council, as well as, for, uh, as, as, uh, as in this cooperation. And it's, of course, also very close to my heart, being a minister for youth in the Swedish government. So I really look forward to today's discussions. Uh, putting the youth perspective in the center of the debate and together with you all to explore what opportunities, what challenges do, you, do we have in the Barents region. I think it's very fruitful to look back uh, on cooperation and at the same time look towards the future. And if you start by looking back, uh, it's, uh, it was in 1993 that the Barents Euro-Arctic cooperation was launched. It was launched by the foreign ministers and representatives of Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden, and of course the EU Commission. And at the same time, the county governors, together with the indigenous peoples, signed a protocol that established the Barents Regional Council. And the aim of the Barents Cooperation was and is to promote peace, stability, and regional development. And today, 25 years later, not only I, can I see that Luleå has uh, changed dramatically and, and, and become a much more uh, young city, I, we can also together reaffirm our commitment to the principles in the Kirkenes Declaration. The Borens Corporation is, uh, has many faces, and uh, 
This is an element of the strength of the cooperation. It's based on people-to-people -people contacts, and it's carried out in consensus. We don't vote. A spirit of dialogue at national, regional, and local level. The indigenous peoples, the Sami, the Nenets, and the Veps, are important partners in this cooperation. Working together on a regional level with a constructive cooperation has played and still does play an important role in ensuring stability in the Barents region. And stability is, of course, very important when you, we discuss sustainable development and a sustainable future. Needless to say, uh, the people in this region, and in, I, real, uh, I include the indigenous people, have the same right to economic and social development as everyone in our societies. Uh, and of course, sustainable development couldn't be more crucial than it is here in the Barents region. The current challenges of climate change are making our interaction and collaboration even more important. Climate change is already putting great strain on local communities and ecosystems. And we all know that the Barents region is particularly vulnerable <coughs> to rising temperatures. <coughs> And uh, the prospects for the Barents Sea to be ice-free year-round uh, quite soon already by mid-century is, of course, looming over our heads. To support innovations in green technology, to use best practices throughout the product production cycle, to, to use digitalization in order to make sure that we have a sustainable development is uh, crucial everywhere, but even more crucial here in the Barents region. <coughs> We have taken important steps. The implementation of the Barents Action Plan on Climate Change is a concrete example and a very solid basis for further engagement. We have lots of other examples. For instance, reduction of the number of environmental hotspots in the region, development of networks for regional climate strategies, continued conservation and sustainable use of uh, wetlands, could uh, be seen as very important accomplishments to encourage us in our continued efforts for a cleaner and safer environment. We need a green shift in the development of societies and in our aspirations for providing a good life, not only for ourselves, but, and this is, uh, of course, one of the reasons why we think it's a good thing to have a youth perspective when we think of future generations. So the Barents Cooperation has served us well through the years, through the 25 years, and you could see it as a model for successful regional cooperation. And we have all the reason to strengthen this cooperation uh, in, in the European Arctic. In 2008, uh, one of the milestones in our 25 years co co uh, cooperation, the International Barents Secretariat was established in Kirkenes. And this secretariat, of course, plays a crucial role in coordinating the work and service of the institution. It serves as an institutional memory of Barents cooperation. And this year, very appropriately, we celebrate the 10 years anniversary of the Kirkenes, uh, the international secretariat. Now, we have looked back, but looking ahead, uh, our 25, 25th anniversary gives us a perfect opportunity to take stock of our achievements, but it gives us an even better opportunity to look ahead. The title of the Swedish chairmanship program is Regional Sustainable Development for the Future. And our program is based on the Agenda 2030 and the pa Paris Climate uh, Agreement. It focuses simultaneously on the environmental, economical and social dimensions of sustainable development. And sectors that will be these sectors will be further discussed during this, uh, today's sessions. Youth, respect for human rights, gender equality, or other main components promoted in all areas of cooperation during the Swedish uh, chairmanship. Sweden has, as you know, or as you might know, a feminist government, so gender equality is very close to our hearts. Another priority for the Swedish chairmanship is to increase the visibility of the Barents Cooperation, its achievements and success stories, and to communicate this to a wider audience, also outside the Barents region. And one of the many success stories was 
presented yesterday during the dinner, that was the Barents Winter Game. And uh, this is something that, at least in the Swedish context, really ma managed to get come through and, and reach uh, many Swedish hearts. The strength of Barents cooperation lies in the people, the peoples and the people of the region. Their knowledge, their experience, their cultural expressions, the diversity and the heritage. The future of the region relies on continued investments in youth, education, research, culture, health and social issues, and uh, not least reliable trans-border infrastructure is essential to make the Barents region attractive to live in and to work in. Hopefully, the investments made will provide the younger generation with incentives, not only to work and study, but also to stay in the region. And the restarted joint working group on youth, together with the Barents Regional Youth Council, will of course provide very valuable fora for contacts and give opportunities to provide a youth perspective of Barents cooperation. These contacts help cross-border interaction and facilities increase, of course, facilitates increased understanding. And this is also one of the purposes of this conference. In all our efforts during the Swedish chairmanship, we will work very closely with the regional chairmanship in Finnmark. During 2018, Sweden also chairs the Council of Baltic Sea States, CBSS, and the Nordic Council of Ministers. And uh, we will, of course, use this as a good opportunity for increased synergies between different regional fora. And we will also continue our close cooperation with the Finnish chairmanship of the Arctic Council. Now, uh, practical and project-oriented cross-border cooperation often leads to increased understanding, sometimes to long-lasting friendships, even families, who knows? To promote tangible results, the Swedish chairmanship has decided to support two cross-border projects focusing on youth. And we believe that these projects will bring added value uh, to, um, <laughs> uh, to the region and also added value to our cooperation with a valuable youth perspective. And the first pro uh, project is called Robota 18, the next generation. And it's a project will, which will be conducted by the Barents Press through interviews and aims at finding out what the younger generation believes to be the most important and the reasoning behind what is most important. And these interviews will hopefully result in a presentation in a booklet to decision makers in the region and in the public. And the aim is, of course, to make sure that we not only talk, but we also listen to the young voices in the Barents region. The second project targets young indigenous peoples, the Sami, the Nenets, the Veps. And this project is called Applying Best Practices and Capacity Building in Indigenous Education. It will be headed by the Sami Education Institute and will incorporate, for example, sustainable reindeer herding, traditional handicraft livelihood, virtual teaching, and learning technologies. And as a minister with a responsibility for, for uh, uh, important parts of the Swedish education system, uh, to use education as a tool is very close to my heart. I really believe, strongly believe, it is essential to continue upholding this important practical and concrete cooperation, building on the strengths uh, of the regions, long-lasting people-to-people cross-border interaction, diversity and multifaceted societies. So we can look back on 25 years of successful cooperation in Barents. It gives us a solid ground to start from when, when facing our future challenges. And in this region, very many of the future challenges, not least the climate change challenges, are common. And when looking around in this room and uh, looking around that when we had dinner yesterday, I can see and I can feel that this cooperation seems to have a promising future if we can rely on the future generations to be interested and take part and also if we can make sure that they have a voice and they have a say in the future Barents cooperation. I feel very sh uh, sure that I can rely on the younger generation to 
uh, take on this challenge. And I feel very happy that we are uh, making this conference a place where we work together. Uh, those of us who look back on 25 years of cooperation and all the young persons looking ahead on 25 and many more years of cooperation. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, excellencies and very dear friends, I wish you all a very good conference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna Ekström, Minister for Upper Secondary School and Adult Education and Training, and also the Youth Minister in Sweden. And now it's time for our next speaker. Tom Erland Skaug is the State Secretary of the Norwegian Ministry of Children and Equality. The ministry has the overall responsibility for children welfare, services, family affair, childhood, childhood development, anti-discrimination, equality, and consumer affairs. Oh, you can... Yeah, can. yeah. <laughs> we like that spontaneous applause, it's nice, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you for a very nice evening and a very nice dinner yesterday. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, youth representatives, the Barents region is uh, a peaceful and stable region. And uh, through the Barents cooperation, we have found, I believe, ways of working together based on trust, cooperation, and common interest. This is important to us and we must make sure that it stays this way. As we know, the Barons Corporation has served us well for 25 years and this is truly worth a celebration. But it also provides an opportunity to reflect, to take stock, and to think ahead. On behalf of the Norwegian government, I would like to thank the Swedish chairmanship for organizing this terrific event. Norway applauds and shares Sweden's goal to revitalize the youth cooperation in the region. Because children and youth truly hold the key to the Barents future. And our common ambition should be that every child and every youngster, no matter where they st start out in life, should have equal opportunities and good living conditions. A central part of the Barents youth policy should be continued support for multilateral youth cooperation in the region in areas of sport, of culture, and education. For young people, meetings and cross-border contacts presents a chance to understand the, li the lives and the exciting history of others. Youth, by their nature, are adventurous and seek new experiences, and we must work together to create good conditions for this curiosity to flourish. Mobility strengthens the sense of community between youth. It helps to form a common identity and a mutual understanding in the region. Some of the youngsters will grow into future leaders and lasting friendships and networks created through early youth contact provide a solid basis to solve common challenges in the future. There are many uh, inspiring examples of youth cooperation in the Barents region. For example, in the International Trade Skills Competition, Arctic Skills, happening right now in Tornio in Finland, students across the Barents region compete in activities such as crafts and carpentry. What a brilliant way to meet new people and to promote professional pride. Focusing on education 
and skills is a powerful investment in the future. School dropouts and youth employment is a common challenge in, for the countries in the Barents region. And this government aims to make the northern part of Norway one of the most innovative and sustainable regions in the country. For instance, by creating better infrastructure through the National Transport Plan. This is important for innovation and for enterprise. Of course, it is the region's own citizens, companies and politicians that have the most important role to play. National and local efforts in this area, skills development, education and research should always consider young people's perspectives. A youth perspective for the future will also need to address modern technology. Social media help to connect in new ways, which is especially important in areas with uh, large distances between people. And this um, development is hugely positive. But at the same time, social media has a flip side. We know that uh, discrimination and bull bullying online can silence voices of some and suppress true democratic participation. We are also told that uh, young Samis are affected by hateful debates in commentary fields. Mental health is a major field of commitment for the government. We're concerned that depression and stress is part of everyday life for a growing number of young people. In a recent Barents Youth Conference, mental health was mentioned as one of the most important challenges for youth in the region today. One of the most important features of the Barents region is cultural diversity. Young indigenous people make a dec decisive contribution to the culture of the North. Norway will promote awareness and respect of the rights of indigenous people. A specific measure is to preserve indigenous people's languages in education institutions. We must create our future youth policy in cooperation with young people themselves. In our quite new uh, political platform, we state our intention to establish a youth panel. This means that uh, the Norwegian government will consult, consult the panel in all issues related to the lives of young people. Youth from all regions of Norway, including, of course, the Barents region, will play, will play a role in this panel. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Norwegian government, Children and youth are our most precious resource. Youth policy has the highest priority for the government. We must help children and we must help youth to find their own path and make them realize that they are good enough. For 25 years, the Barents Corporation has promoted good neighborly relations and sustainable development in the region. I'm sure that this conference will provide a solid basis for further collaboration on youth policy in the Barents region, and that it will contribute to further development of the good relations between our nations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom Erland Skaug. Uh, State Secretary of the Norwegian Ministry of Children and Equality. Uh, we're going to move on right away. The next speaker is State Secretary and Deputy Minister Samuel Iviltanen from Finland. He works as a State Secretary for the Government Ministers of the Blue Reform Party. And in this conference, he represents Minister Sampo Tarho, Minister for European Affairs, Culture and Sports, who is responsible for youth affairs. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, dear Minister, 
dear colleagues, representatives of the Barents region, dear youth participants. First, I must say that we've had a very good start for this conference and um, delicious dinner and very intriguing discussion last night, and it was very hygge as the Danish would probably say. And this morning, just like Anna, Anna already told you, we visited the local high school, and it was very invigorating, very encouraging um, meeting and, and visit there. And I remember when we, we had a little tour there and we went to see young, young women in their late teens uh, working, uh, future technicians, welders, mechanics, engineers there, learning new skills, and uh, I'm a humanist, so I don't really know what they were doing, actually. And, uh, uh, I, will, I think I will always remember when Anna told me when we were observing what they were doing, she said, one politician said to another politician, that's real work. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I, I very much agree. Uh, but I wish to thank you, Anna, and your team that, uh, for organizing this important meeting here in uh, Luleå. This is my first time here in, in this region, in this beautiful capital, capital of Norrbotten. Uh, I also wish you all the best with the chairmanship of the Barents Euro Atlantic Council. Um, for already, already 25 years, Barents Corporation has contributed to stability, sustainable development, and people-to-people -people contacts in this region. And this unique structure, which involves both national and regional uh, levels, as well as the indigenous peoples, it's been uh, the recipe for our successful cooperation. And to cope with the changing conditions uh, the young people need to build a broad knowledge and competence base and update it through their lives. Just what they're doing here in, in Luleå, in the local school education system. And this happens both through non-formal learning and through a well-functioning formal education system. The main objective of education policy should be to offer all citizens equal opportunities to quality education, regardless of their geographical or other background. And despite the technological advances, mobility for educational or work-related reasons will be an important element in young people's lives also in the future. At its best, mobility offers great possibilities enabling young people to gain valuable experiences and to learn adaptation skills. Since 1999, Barents Youth Corporation has been an integral part of Barents' activities. And I'm pleased to see that the youth is among the, the priorities of the Swedish chairmanship. And I'm also very happy that uh, even though we're celebrating 25 years of Barron's cooperation, we're not just remembering what we've done over the years, but we focus on, on the youth and the, and the future. And this, I think this conference provides us a good opportunity to elaborate how the Barron's youth cooperation could be developed to reflect the current times and to correspond to the needs of young people today. During these past few years, living conditions globally and in the Barents region have changed dramatically, as we all know. Climate change is a major concern with broad implications for mo most sectors of our lives. The rapid technological development, transformation of work life and increased mobility are all trends that have an important effect, especially on the young people's lives now and in the future. I would also like to underline the importance of youth organisations. They can play a crucial role in promoting the development of skills and competences. A good example is the, the Barents Regional Youth Council, Bruk, which provides a forum for young people from the Barents regions to meet and exchange 
views and experiences. It's important that government policies support youth activities and encourage young people to become active members of society. Respecting freedom and autonomy of youth organisations and other civic organisations is of utmost importance also in this region. I'm looking forward to having discussions with young people during this conference and learning about your expectations, your thoughts about the future. Thank you. Tusen tack. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Samuli Virtanen, State Secretary. I was waiting for that one to come. <laughs> so much English words. <laughs> State Secretary and uh, Deputy Minister. Um, all of these speakers that are up on stage today will also join in for a panel discussion later. So whatever thoughts you have or anything that you find interesting, just take notes and be a part of the panel discussion uh, later on. Okay? Okay? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, the next speaker is uh, Sergei Petrovic, Deputy Director of the Second European Department uh, of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. Uh, for many years in the Russian uh, Foreign Ministry, uh, you have been dealing with issues related to, this is tricky, bilateral relations with the Nordic countries and multilateral cooperation in the European North. Um, Sergei Petrovich is a senior official of Russia in the Barents Euro-Arctic Council and the Council of the Baltic Sea States. Please. Thank you. Yep. Thank you Welcome. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, excellencies, uh, dear friends, so first of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Swedish chairmanship of the BIAC and to authorities of Lulio for a really cordial uh, reception we have received uh, during these two days and for organizing uh, this event to commemorate this remarkable date, the 25th years of the Barents Cooperation. Uh, this uh, special occasion provides us with a good opportunity uh, to review and to reflect our achievements, to outline the plans for the future and try to see beyond the horizon. Today we can say for sure that after 25 years of uh, its work, the Council fully lived up to its main purpose and established itself as an indispensable interstate cooperation mechanism which generates a unifying agenda literally on an everyday, on a daily basis. Uh, joint activities of the BIAC are strictly practical and concrete, which make it possible for us to achieve progress in almost all spheres of our cooperation. We believe that the main result of the BIAC activities is that by joint efforts we manage to establish in the Northern Europe the area of peace, confidence, stability and good neighbourhood, which is resistant to the fluctuations of the political environment. BIAC successfully deals with a wide range of issues starting from transport, environmental protection, uh, cultural and tourist exchanges, to education, science, healthcare, contingency preparedness and joint response to emergency situations. A very important item on the agenda of our cooperation is the protection of the interests uh, and rights of the indigenous people. But the overarching goal of the Council is to ensure the uh, sustainable social and economic development of the region and create comfortable living conditions for its citizens. However, even such a successful cooperation format uh, as BIAC should keep up with the times and to adapt to new global realities. To this end, Russia, during its recent chairmanship, has proposed to establish a high-level regional forum, a kind of a Barents Davos, where representatives from the political, business and research communities, as well as media, will discuss the entire Barents agenda with the emphasis on the sustainable social, economic and environmental uh, development of the region. And we intend to put this initiative into practice by uh, organizing the first pilot uh, Barents Davos within the framework of the uh, 7th Murmansk International Business Week, which is to be held this year from the 12th to the 16th of uh, November. We highly appreciate the decision of Sweden to focus uh, during its chairmanship on youth issues 
and it fully corresponds to the uh, Russian vision of uh, the future of our cooperation, and it goes completely in line with the initiative which was put forward by the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov at the 16th Biak Ministerial Session recently in Arhangelsk uh, to um, establish a permanent youth forum which would work on all three levels, national, regional and local. Uh, we consider it to be uh, an investment in the future of our cooperation since it is the present young generation that will determine the course of development of the Barents region in the not too distant future. It's important that young people from our countries, and uh, some of them probably will become politicians in the future, uh, regularly uh, meet and communicate with each other already now, and shaping by that a sort of the youth biak to discuss relevant issues of the regional agenda. In conclusion, I would like once again to stress Russia's strong commitment to the Barents cooperation, which is probably one of the most successful models of regional cooperation ever. And uh, I'm sure that this conference, uh, which has brought so many uh, stakeholders and representatives of the youth organizations, uh, will contribute significantly both to the uh, development of youth cooperation as well as to exploring the uh, challenges and opportunities we are facing today in our region. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sergei Petrovich, senior official of the Committee of the Barnes Euro-Arctic Council. Now it's time for Ragnhild Vasvik, chair of Barnes Regional Council, Finnmark, Norway. Previously, previously, she has been state secretary with main focus on matters that concern the Sami people and the national minorities at the Ministry of Renewal and Administration. She's also been in the Council for Karasjok County for many years. Welcome. Ministers, state secretaries, dear Barnes friends, dear Barnes youth, thank you for your warm welcome. And I'm so happy to see that so many people have came here to Luleå to take part in the commem uh, commemorating 25 years of the Barnes cooperation. Many refers to the fact that today's youth are the leaders of tomorrow. I would therefore thank, like to thank the Sweden, Sweden for taking action and putting youth in front when uh, we today celebrate the anniversary of this very important cooperation and looking towards the future. Young men and women like you are bringing new energy and creativity to our region. Young people are the driving force for change and can encourage us to declare our priorities. As the regional leadership of the Barnes Cooperation, youth are, are also among our priorities. However, I would like to quote the Norwegian authors Arne Olsen, who said, you cannot save the strength of youth to later years. So the youth have to take part in the, in the discussions from now. As we during the commemoration, we'll be trying to look into the future of the Barnes Cooperation. It is therefore crucial that we receive input from you, the youth. I will also stress the issue of indigenous people. I hope and I believe that the new generation of politicians will take for granted that indigenous representation and questions that concern these groups will be uh, as natural at the, uh, uh, the agenda like others' issues in the Barnes region. We who live in the Barnes region have so much to be proud of. The Barnes Regional Youth Council is doing an excellent job to putting youth issue to the, on the agenda. 
But how do we visualize that and in an even, even better way? And how do we create a Barnes identity? What should be done for even more youth to stay in the region? These are just some questions that I have standing for you here today. But as Marlin said yesterday evening, keep on asking questions and be curious. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And I look very much forward to take part in the lively and fruitful discussion later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Borrowing some of yeah. my words there, yeah. I'm happy to share them with you. <laughs> uh, Ragnhild Vasvik, Chair of Barnes Regional Council. Now it's time for our final speaker before uh, coffee break. It's Katarina Lindmark, representative of the Barnes Regional Youth Council, Norrbotten, Sweden. Katarina Lindmark is studying her final year at Upper Secondary School in Arvinsjaur. And besides her commitment in the Barnes Regional Youth Council, she's also a board member of Norrbottens Regional Youth Council since 2016, representing uh, Arvidsjaur municipality. We are so glad that you're here and we are looking forward to hear uh, the youth perspective, right? Yes, stage is yours. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I'm shaking, I'm a bit nervous, uh, but hello uh, Barnes people and welcome to my region, Norrbotten. Um, since I was born, I've been um, living in the Barnes region. I was born in Västerbotten and I was raised in Arvidsjör, Norrbotten. So but the Barnes region has a big part in my heart. And for me, <laughs> Uh, since it's my last year in upper secondary, I'm supposed to go out in the world and explore. And that's something that's very common among people my age. Uh, we want to go out in the world, explore, but another thing is that we also have this love for the Barnes region, at, that we want to move back here in the future, or at least live here as we grow older. But to do that, we need to focus on if we can live here or not. Like, do we have work uh, when we are coming back? Because as we are going outside in the world and expo exploring, <laughs> we really see new perspectives and maybe we're like stuck there. But many of us want to live here as we grow older and therefore we need to focus <laughs> on the work question, but also on how we can travel around, like transportation. That's very close to me because during the BRIC events and the other Barnes regional events, uh, I've met a lot of people from all over the Barnes region, but I can't really travel to them a lot because, well, it's a big region, first of all, and later on we don't have that good transportation. <laughs> um, but that would also be easier like if we say when I graduate from university and I have a and I have a diploma I want to get a job does it exist up here if it doesn't do I have transportation so I can still live here and maybe travel to my workplace every week or so and those are questions that I think are very important for us as youth since we are the social generation we like to talk and be with other people and see other perspectives from other countries. And yeah, that's kind of what I want to give you all to think about as we are going further into the day. And I hope that we can come forward with some good conclusions or maybe just some ideas on how to make this region better for us. And like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Katarina. Uh, Katarina Lindmark, uh, youth representative from Arvidsjaur. Thank you so much for your words. Uh, what a great start of this conference, don't you think? A lot of interesting, a lot of inspiring words that really gets us going because it's soon time for our first 
panel discussion. Um, but first, we need to refill some energy. Coffee, maybe some sugar, yeah? <laughs> you find the Fika uh, station just right outside. Uh, enjoy your break. Talk to someone you, be curious, remember? Be a bit uncomfortable sometimes, maybe? And I want you all to be back here like 10, 12 past 11, because 11, 15 sharp, we go live again. And please, there's a beautiful uh, photo uh, contrib... Uh, con What's the word? Uh, exhibition, yes, photo exhibition, just outside. So please, take a look at those photos, enjoy your coffee, post on Instagram, BarnesYouth25 is the hashtag, and I will see you again very soon. Thank you.
Hallo, ja, это. Låter så här annars. Jag har på den nu, men ja, så låter den. Ja, hejsan, hejsan. Ja, visst. Ettan, 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 ja, ett, 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 två, 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 tvåan, tvåan, ja hopp, ja hopp, ja hopp, ettan var så här, tvåan var så här, tvåan låter ni lite svagare, fortfarande. Ska vi, är det något vi ska skruva till? Testa så här. Ettan, ettan, tvåan, tvåan, tvåan. Ja, ja visst, ja visst, ja visst, ja visst, ja visst. Ettan, ettan, tvåan, tvåan. Nu, nu börjar det. Perfekt. Ja, ja, sexan. Hej, hej, hej. Ja, hej, hej. Check, check, one, two, two, one, two. Okej. Okay. Ja. 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 Ja, 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 ja. Ja, ja, okej. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, det är en annan kapsel. Ja. Ja, 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 okej.
All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, we will uh, very soon begin. And uh, can I please ask all of the uh, people that are going to join in the panel to take seat on the stage? Thank you. So all of you that will be joining in the panel discussion. Uh, it, I think it will work when, because the, yeah. So please find a seat that you like and uh, get comfortable and then we will get started uh, in just a second. Thank you very much. How to sit comfortable in the chair on stage, right? <laughs> yeah, that's always an issue. <laughs> All right. So, how was your break? A thumb up in the back? Two thumbs up? Great. Did you meet someone new? Yes? yes. Yeah, good. Uh, did you talk to someone interesting? Exchange maybe some contact information? Yeah? Okay, good. So now it's time for our first panel discussion for today. And we have some friends ups, uh, ups, upstairs, up on stage, that you already know. Uh, we have Minister uh, Anna Ekström from Sweden, State Secretary Tom Erland Skaug from Norway. We also have State Secretary Samuli Virtanen from Finland, Chair of the Barents Regional Council, Ragnhild Vassvik from uh, Norway, Finnmark, uh, Sergei Petrovic, Senior Official of the Committee of Barents Euro Arctic Council, Russia. Katarina Lindmark, there you are, yeah. representative of the Barents Regional Youth Council from Sweden. And we also have three, uh, three more people joining us for this panel. Uh, Audrone Perkaskiene, per per yes, uh, European External Action Service. Uh, she works with a uh, European Diplomatic Service in charge of regional cooperation from Arctic to the Black Sea. Uh, you're a lawyer by education and a diplomat for the last 20 years. You have three kids, so youth issues, you know them. <laughs> Very welcome to the panel. Uh, we also have uh, Hanne Sophie Ruansen, co chair of the Joint Working Group on Youth. Your main focus is a lot to increase youth involvement in local uh, government and politics. We're very happy to have you here. We also have Tim Andersson, uh, the new chair uh, of Barnes Regional Youth Council and also the chair of Barnes Press. Welcome to the panel. Are you guys ready? Yeah, let's start. So 25 years of Barnes Corporation. What is the first thing that pops up into your mind when we talk about Barnes Corporation? Who wants the first word? The mics are on the table. Ooh, is this a good sign or a bad sign? I don't know. <laughs> yes, go first, Anna. Yes, my, my f the first the word that pops up is the word cooperation. Uh, the fact that we have managed for 25 years to start without red tape and bureaucracy, a fruitful cooperation which is focusing on what's important to the people and the peoples living in the area. That's, the, that's what pops up in my mind. Aldron, Aldrone, yes? I may say that from a foreign policy point of view, it's a success story. In what way? Uh, all the ways, cooperation, collaboration, peace, prosperity, security, stability, potential for the future, you know. No protracted conflicts. You know. Nowadays, it's already a lot. Yeah. So you work from like all the way from uh, the Arctic to the Black Sea, or that way, right? What would you say is unique with this Barnes Corporation? The spirit of cooperation, the will, the goodwill, the spirit of neighborship. 
it's 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 a lot. It's we have to cherish that. We have to keep nourishing that. We have to look into the future, and we have to uh, to have our EO, EO, uh, Byron's cooperation better known. That is why visibility communication strategy is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to add? Yes, please. Tom yes, Island. Yeah. For me, it's a, a very important aspect that is. It has been for 25 years now a, a platform for people in the Barnes region to meet, to build a platform for further cooperation and to build trust. Um, and uh, from the Norwegian perspective, when the, the Barnes uh, cooperation started 25 years ago, the, the border between uh, Norway and Russia had been uh, hermetically closed for decades. Now. Uh, we have uh, more than 250,000 people crossing the border each year. And that's uh, quite a uh, vital sign that uh, the Barnes Corporation has uh, built in cooperation and uh, uh, exchange of ideas and uh, that it help, that has helped people come together in the Barnes region. And that is a very important aspect for me. Yes, and uh, I will just... Um the, uh, the question of uh, the Barnes uh, region is part of the Arctic um, and uh, it's an important part of the Arctic, uh, Arctic region. Uh, we have uh, uh, something about five and six million people are living in this region and we are, have a good um, uh, something uh, uh, societies yeah. and towns and and we are well functioning uh, societies and um, I think that is very important to, to stress in the uh, in the um, all the, the uh, Arctic talking about the Arctic so we have to to uh, to um, push the, the barns in, in in the Arctic yes thank you Tim yes well for me uh the Barnes Corporation has existed for 25 years, and well, it has been all these great success stories uh, with a uh, peaceful cooperation in the Barnes region. But for me, uh, it's also changing lives in many ways because while well, we are doing these types of projects, people are coming here, young people, old people, old people, and they are meeting someone that they might have not been knowing before. And that is an extremely important aspect of this uh, thing. I mainly work with projects. I take people to all different, all different parts of the Barons region. And I see these friendships, these love stories happen in front <laughs> of my eyes. And it's an amazing opportunity to have that in this region. And for me, the people and the connections that we can make in this region are vastly the best thing about this Barnes Corporation. And it's been existing now for 25 years, and it should continue for at least 25, 125 years. <laughs> Thank you. That's a really great input. Yes. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Molin. And uh, for me, when we're talking about Barnes, uh, the, uh, the Barnes Corporation, the, probably the most closest association, it's very intensive people-to-people -people contacts, which is the very essence of the Barnes Corporation and the existence of the regional council, which is, makes the Barnes Corporation absolutely unique in comparison with other regional format of cooperation. Because you know that in the regional council we have 14 regions or so administrative territorial units, five from Russia, four from Finland, uh, three from Norway and two from Sweden, which cooperates uh, on practically everyday basis. And it's uh, uh, absolutely unprecedented uh, level of openness and transparency uh, for example, the uh, relations and the ties between the North and Norway, especially the county of Finnmark and the Murmansk Oblast. So uh, when uh, I visit Murmansk, so uh, it seems to me that the, uh, their relations and their ties with Finnmark are much closer than we, with other bordering Russian regions. So it's uh, almost a family relations which we enjoy with uh, North and uh, Norway and in the Barents region on the whole. And uh, we have so many striking examples of the uh, close uh, cooperation 
and uh, people-to-people -people contacts, which were absolutely uh, impossible so for a couple of decades ago. Uh, one of the best examples, uh, uh, to my mind, we have already mentioned here today the uh, Barents sports games, which uh, uh, took place in Sweden uh, just recently. But another very striking example is the annual event, which is called the Ski Track of Friendship, when thousands of people participating in the ski race uh, in the border area uh, where the borders of three countries merge, Russia, Finland and Norway. And the people participate uh, in this ski race through the borders of the three countries without any passports, without any visas. So it's uh, absolutely amazing. So this is a very, very uh, good example of our cooperation, the, transpar the transparency, the trust and the confidence which we enjoy in the region. And that was something that you were talking about, Samuli, during your... Uh, speech, like the Barnes projects and the youth projects. That's correct, right, and I would say uh, very much agree with what Sergei just said, that people-to-people uh, -people contacts is something. And also it seems that the, the Barnes cooperation stems from the, from the regional level. It's not just what has been agreed in four capitals and we're instructing people in this area, that, okay, you should actually do things like that. No, it's it, uh, comes from the, uh, I would say, people level. And uh, when I look at our uh, Finnish Nordic, northern Finnish communities, um, you can see lots of positive signs. It's not about um, change and decay and uh, everything going worse. But no, we are uh, under the auspices of uh, Barents Corporation. I would say that the more or less reinventing the north and uh, making our com communities on all four countries more vibrant um, and uh, more intriguing, more innovative and, and people see better prospects for the future and, uh, and also it, it, it seems that uh, in this area at least on the border, Swedish, Finnish border, it, see, it seems that these people people contact are very natural and uh, I would say that uh, lots of uh, Nordic Finnish people, they um, think that okay, those people also living in, in the northern parts of their country, living in the Barents region there are lots of things that uh, unify them and they may, may think that a Finnish person living in uh, say Rovaniemi or Ivalo um, Torneo may think that okay, those people living in Finnmark and the Norbot and Murmansk area understand better my life, normal life, than than some politicians in Helsinki. Yeah. So I know you want to speak. I'm just gonna uh, move forward. Now we have been talking a little bit about what the past 25 years have been and what the cooperation has meant. And as you see on the big sign here, it's supposed to be youth perspective for the future. So looking for the future, and maybe you'd like to start there. What is one of the main things that you see as a challenge for us? What do we need to do yes, for the first future? First of all, I want to thank uh, Katrina for many good questions. Uh, it's not, as a youth coordinator, I'm not used to sit in the panel there, but most of the youngsters <laughs> who I work with will sit here. But I think it's because I have no been a co-chair for the Joint Working Group of Youth. So uh, I thank you for the opportunity for address this session to fulfill the potential of the Barents and decision makers and ministers to address the voice of the young people. So... Um, if you would say one thing that yeah. you think is really... Uh, I have these five eyes. <laughs> <laughs> to work with the young people, you had to invite them you have to include them, you have to inspire them, and you have to invest. Because um, money talks. <laughs> and I know I have been lucky to have many good projects and people to people in uh, connecting also with this brick. And I still have contact with elderly brickers. And I met them, they call this uh, pensioner bricker. <laughs> <laughs> Retired. <laughs> but they're only 20 or something. So. <laughs> and all of them are so thankful for having this opportunity uh, from 2001 or two, And all of them have good jobs now and uh, they still cooperate in the Barents. So really cool. I'm very thankful for that. And I hope also that Tim said 
many, many years to go. So, Catalina, uh, you mentioned uh, work and transportation as yes. two of the main things that you think is important for you to yes. maybe after your adventures in the world, come back to this region yes. and use that knowledge. Would you care to develop that? Um, I mean, of course, to be able to live up here, we need to have something to work with. Like, we need to have an income in some way. And then, of course, we need jobs. And then, um, if we don't have the jobs at where we live, then we need transportation that work, but also transportation so we can uh, meet our friends and um, keep up with the connections that we make at events like this, where we meet, uh, like this, face to face. Uh, and it's also important that we keep it uh, environmental friendly, like the transportation. So it's not only like, yeah, we can just make a lot of buses go and back and forth, because then we will also ruin the environment that we have up here. And that's also one of the good things about the Barents region, like the nature and the close hand we have at nature. Definitely. Team, you wanted to add something? Oh, just wait. Well, uh, if I think that, of course, uh, to find a job and to have some way of supporting yourself is a key issue, the, the key issue to be able to stay up here in the, in the north. And I don't think it's that hard. Globalization, we have an internet that makes it possible to work. Uh, you have your, your workplace in Stockholm, but you can sit in uh, Karesuando because you have internet. You can work from, uh, not from your home. And these uh, technical uh, aspects can be used and should be used in a much more way. And we need to be more flexible. Companies need to be more flexible. Governmental entities need to be more flexible in order to make sure that it is possible to live in another part of Sweden and work in another one. Of course, we need to meet physically. In Sweden, I would say, along the bigger cities, we have a good transportation system. Uh, so yeah, key, work is uh, uh, the key uh, in this. And it's solvable. And it's not that hard. Tom Marlon, do you want to say something? Yeah. Because uh, you were talking about transport as well. Yeah. Uh, I think that's um, an important Keep part. The microphone a little I closer. think that's yeah. um, a really important point um, because um, making the Barents region even more prosperous for young people, making making young people have equal opportunities to fulfill their visions and talents and ambitions in life, we still have a few challenges and. One of them is, of course, education. Uh, we do have good educational systems in all the countries in the Barents region. But one problem is that uh, the dropout rate is from, uh, from uh, um, secondary ed education is still too high. Uh, in Norway, it is almost three out of 10 young people do not uh, degree. Uh, and our goal is to uh, that nine out of ten uh, youth should degree uh, within 2030. So making sure that uh, all young people have a, a good basis uh, based on a, on, a, on a good education is is quite fundamental. But then there's also, uh, of course, work. You have to have work opportunities to make it possible for young people who want to stay, who want to live, who want to work in the Barents region. And um, luckily, uh, the, the, the work opportunities in, in at least uh, the northern part of Norway is quite good at the moment. But we have to keep working on innovation, creating new jobs to make sure that the jobs are there for the young people who want to live and work in, in the Barents region. Uh, and of course, the uh, the technical development, internet, and so on makes it makes it easier. We have strong higher education uh, institutions in all the countries in the Barents region. That makes it possible to have a career, have a good life, live in the Barents region. I, and I think uh, uh, education, work, and also uh, 
making the transportation system even better in the Barents region is three key points uh, for making that possible. And uh, in Norway, we are now uh, investing quite large amounts of money in, uh, in the transportation system in the northern part of Norway. But the cross-country uh, uh, transportation system is not that very well developed, and that is perhaps something we should work on uh, going forward. Definitely. Anna, did you want to add something to the transport yes. uh, uh, or education? Yeah, education is of course key, jobs are key, uh, transportation is key, all these have been mentioned. But I would like to add one fourth key, uh, and that is uh, the possibility to be connected, to be uh, online. Like Tim was talking about yes, as well. Yeah. Yes, and that is important if you want to, to commute, if you want to sort of work from, from your home, but also if you want to study from your home, huge opportunities are opening up. And uh, for, for the sparsely populated parts in the Barents region, I think this is even more important than it is in, in other areas in, in our different countries. But still, uh, the fantastic, the really uh, different thing with the Barents cooperation is the fact that uh, it's a people-to-people -people, uh, cooperation. And as many of you have said, it is so important to guard this. We, we, Sometimes we don't take care of what we already have because we dream of creating new fantastic uh, cooperations. But we must take care of this cooperation and really build on it and make sure that in 25 years from now we will have as good cooperation as we have now. And if we want to do that, we really need the youth to be, uh, not, uh, not only for us to invest in the youth, but for the youth to invest in the Barents region. So all these things, they really come together goes both ways. Um, just a second, I'm very curious if we have any, any question from the audience or anyone want to take part. What, what, what does the, the crew in the middle here think about that? What if you could have a better opportunities to work from home or study from home? Any comments on that? No? Silence. <laughs> Uh, Lisa, do we have anything from the social media that you'd like to share with us? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So we have one question that uh, relates to technology and communication. Um, I can read it from here. I would like to raise uh, the discussion and challenge to try out modern communications and how the new generation applications could and should be used for Barron's Corporation. How and what could the different age groups involved learn from each other's methods and communicate in an effective way about things related to cooperation? It's a tricky question. Anyone feel hungry to answer <laughs> to start the discussion? But can I say yes. something about transportation? Because uh, the youngster in the environs really want uh, railway, more uh, trains. Yeah. And um, we don't have that much in the North Norway, but we maybe it will come, uh, I don't know, in my time. Uh, but that will be easy, and we also can connect to, more to Russia. And, uh, but we have Arctic Air Link now, and I'm really happy that we can flew from Tromsø to Aulu in one hour, and to Lulo, and you can go from Lulu to Tromsø in one hour. And I hope m all of you uh, get more cooperation and projects so we can still have this airplane, because that's easy to travel. And uh, last week I just flew from Tromsø to Lulo and uh, drove to Umo. So it's fantastic. Uh, and I also miss this plane, uh, Tromsø Murmansky. So I hope that will come. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the question, like the modern way of communicating, how can we meet over different ages? And yes, I, I yeah? want to, to um, talk a bit uh, about the further uh, Oh, questions. you want to you want yes, to skip? The, 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 you want the, the, to go the back? Yes, yes. <laughs> because uh, this it's allowed. In, <laughs> in, um, in other Norway, we have another situation. We have uh, we, we need more people to come up and skill people to take the, all the jobs we have uh, in the uh, in the society, especially in the business uh, sector. So uh, there's a lot of um, investment and. And we need all, and the, the question is how we get the, the youth coming back to their 
uh, traditional uh, places and, and uh, come back to, from Tromsø, from the university ex example, to, to Finnmark to take the jobs we, we, uh, we have there. So that's um, uh, an open question. So how do the uh, young people, um, uh, what is the need for the young people to come back when, when they had job? What more? Uh, I think the, yeah. the life is, um, uh, is contents a lot more than jobs, but didn't we, uh, don't we have these uh, other things in, in our region to, to, um, to um, present? Maybe Tim, you, I know that you are from Kiruna, right? Yes, well, and I'm you from... are staying in the region, maybe not in Norrbotten, but in Vesterbotten, where you live in Umeå. And what made you like, what is important to you other than the fact that you are uh, working? Well, for me, uh, I think it's uh, quite easy. Youth is no, uh, not that different from anybody else. What do people want? Well, they want a nice place to live. Maybe there should be a small mall, a cinema, a theater, something to go and indulge themselves. And of course, and an good environment and, a nat and the nature. And I think that uh, for many people, uh, it's a trend to move to bigger cities, especially the youth. We are uh, very, as we heard uh, from the Ungdoms Barometer and the Youth Barometer yesterday, we're quite individualistic. We see ourselves, we see our journey in our own life and in as a very important part. And I think that many people do not feel that they can fulfill this dream in the, 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 the places above the, the Arctic Circle or in the Barents region. And uh, I think that, well, of course, uh, for me, there are more possibilities to do uh, other stuff in this region than if I would go to Stockholm, because there's uh, quite many more people <laughs> that could do, uh, <laughs> do certain things that I can do. Um, so for me, it's, it is an opportunity, but we have to uh, address this issue in some way. How can, pe how can young people see their dream be fulfilled, even if you live in Oulu or from in Kirkenes or in Vads or in Murmansk or Apatiti? And I think this is a key issue. Because there are, well, of course, there are works, jobs, people are living here. But how can we change this so that I can fulfill my dream and still live in a smaller place? Yeah. I have a few solutions proposed by the European Union, and I'd like to promote them a bit. I will mention at least three very, very successful projects that come to my mind that you and other, other young people may use. It's Erasmus+. Plus which was enormously successful and still is. And uh, it helps uh, teachers, students, etc., cetera, to, to go out, to, to learn, to meet, to communicate, to exchange. Another one is Horizon 2020 and Maria uh, Slodowska Curie program. It's for scientists and researchers and it is also an enormous success story and I would very much encourage universities to, to be active and to participate and to team up with universities from other regions. And one more is Creative Europe. It's for media and communication and culture people. It's also a very good program, and, and, and I would very much encourage those who are interested to, to go online to, to find information about the Creative Europe program and to participate. Question for uh, Rangdel is um, because we're going to need people, and as we said, go out in the world and uh, experience, but take, come home. <laughs> but take, I take two and the three other youngsters with you. And we also we have to open our homes. So when the youngsters travel and say, come home to my home and have an extra bed, so invite more people to the north. And, uh, <laughs> and also we'll ask the tourism, because it's very attractive for the youngsters now to work in the tourism. And how um, can we get them there? Yes, we have to pay them more. So, so we have to hire the salary, take more money for the tourism, uh, because we... Barin is going to be the most attractive place on earth in the 10, 20 more years. And that if we make this branch very attractive, then we're going to keep the earth and they will come back and they're going to make this barn great again. <laughs> I want to applaud you, but not that great again thing, though. Sorry. 
<laughs> Don't support that man. Um, <laughs> I was just, uh, I'm going to share a bit about my story now because I think it would be appropriate. So uh, I moved uh, to Pitio 10 years ago. You will have your question in just a second. Uh, 10 years ago, next year, to study radio journalism. And I found these unique opportunities here uh, so valuable to me uh, to grow both personally and professionally that I've stayed. And I've continued to grow, to develop. Um, right now, I'm running my own business. And uh, I've, I've learned so much, and I intend to stay here. So there are people that are young, that are driven, and we just have to show them the opportunity and support them. So uh, all of you adults in here that live and work in this region, take care of the young leaders and the young people around you. Uh, show them opportunities, listen to them, learn from each other. I think that's also a really good way to make the future for the youth in this region uh, and to keep developing. Now, your question, please. Yes, your name? Yes, uh, my name is Berta. I'm a PhD student uh, working in urban processes in uh, the Barents region. And yeah. Uh, what I, f I find is missing here is the resources because Baren, and it locates Barents in a very global scale. And uh, there is uh, related to uh, the uh, transportation and uh, uh, work, uh, there is uh, the need of diversification of the economy. So I am totally disagree that the fut future should be uh, only uh, uh, the tourism because uh, you are replica replicating the urbanization of uh, one company town, like uh, not creating diversification of the economy and not creating uh, cities where young people would like to live. So, so how can the tourism industry work together with the environment and protecting the environment? Is that what you're... You, if uh, once you organize it the far north of each of the countries in a very centralized way, uh, building a network transportation system that is not going transborder, it's just going centralized to uh, each uh, capital of the country, or in the case of Sweden, bringing the resources and energy to the south. You can un not, not understand the urbanization of the south of Sweden without the extraction of all the resources in the north all the energy, et cetera. And um, you, uh, I, I am asking myself if, uh, how is cooperation in the variant region uh, working on infrastructure crossing borders, which would bring much diversification in urbanization of the region and different possible futures, not replicating only extraction of resources, uh, mono economy and uh, tourism replicating the same in another age. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone feel hungry to address it? Yeah. Um, in the uh, Barnes uh, uh, Regional, uh, Barnes Council, uh, we are going to, um, we have uh, the pri one of the priority is transportation. And exactly what you all have mentioned, we need the, uh, the cross-border um, uh, transportation. So, that's, uh, we have, uh, uh, for um, last year, it was the opening of the, the uh, how, uh, highway, highway from Kirkenes to Murmansk. And it was a very bad uh, way uh, over there before, but now it's a uh, nice and very good uh, when you go faster to between uh, Kirkenes and, and, uh, and uh, Murmansk. And then we have this uh, Arctic Railway, of course. <laughs> we are hoping for uh, for that. So we, we uh, of, co of course, we're going to push at that um, uh, issue. And um, uh, and uh, of course, this uh, Arctic Link. I'm so sorry that I forgot to check Arctic Link. I <laughs> I forgot that we had this uh, plane when I uh, ordered my uh, ticket for for Luleå. So. But they, it needs to be more highlighted, this, uh, this uh, plain uh, offer. So. so transportation is key, right? We need better transportation. We don't need canceled trains uh, during the winter. <laughs> we need a really reliable, high-speed railway. That is one thing that we really need, right? We all agree. How do we do this? 
Any volunteers building the railway? <laughs> Anna, what was on your mind? Actually, actually, the Swedish government yesterday uh, asked f uh, the, the opposition parties for a consultation on how to uh, go further with high-speed trains. So this is a, and I, I agree with you. This is a difficult question. And also, if you if you take your eyes away from the Barents Corporation, only look inside the different countries, you will see that we all have our transportation from north to south, but very few transportations <laughs> from, from east to, to, to west. And this, this is a tricky issue and a very expensive one too. Uh, we will come back to this, of course. And for me, I'm very happy that the Barents Corporation is also discussing this because it is very important. And without, pr without very good transportation, uh, we, would have, we wouldn't have come as far as, as we have, and with better transportation, of course, we would have had even better communication between our, between our peoples. But let's not, at the same time, forget the digital transportation, the digital communication. It's also very, very important to make sure that all parts of our countries uh, are uh, connected on the digital highways. Um. I know we have to lean about the, in the business about the transportation because, and I know also Finland is talking to Norway about the railway, and I'm really happy. It looks like it will come to Kirkenes. Uh, we hope they will come in Shibotten and the uh, Isafsbahn, but the Norwegians also want it. So, uh, but the, I think Finland will decide what's the best. And if the business come, then the people, the people transport will come because it's, there are too few people here now. But in the future, if they can do business and the people, transportation, that'd be good. And I can also say a thing about education. Um, because we can I just ask yeah. you, uh, staying with the business question, because I think this is quite interesting. So what comes first, people or business? How do we create an environment that the business wants to, to come more to? Kids. We have to make a love and more kids. <laughs> like <laughs> Tim said, love stories, and right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, how do we uh, attract businesses to this region? That's also a big question. Did you want I to add I something? Have, I have a, one thing I said. We have this um, fiber, fiber, and we also have to talk about that. Connection. Because it's really important. And yeah. we talk about internet yeah, and yeah. fast. And if you see the fiber from the United States, it goes in Europe. And all the business it creates along the way. So if we get the fiber up here, then it will create lots more business. We have Google, we have... Uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook here in Luleå. <laughs> and uh, I know here and I is very an old or very technical. Uh, so get the fiber here first, and then the train, and then. But, but <laughs> yeah, it's after about the education. <laughs> Did you want to add something, Samuli? Yes. Yep. You're so far away from the microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, about your questions. Uh, With the business. Yes. Yep. Business or people? Who comes first? Um, at the moment, I would say that uh, when we look at the north and in, in Finland, the, the biggest um, individual project as far as transportation is concerned is about the Arctic Railway, uh, whether we extend it from, from Rovaniemi to Kirkenes, and sort of having an idea that you could take a, ro take a train from Kirkenes all the way to, uh, to Helsinki, down the Baltic Sea to Tallinn, and all the way through, through the Baltic States. To the Central Europe, uh, so Kirkenes, Berlin. It might take some time, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, yes, yes. But uh, which will come first, the people who use it or the businesses who require it? Uh, at the, at the, the moment, needs, we've yeah. we've we've conducted several surveys. First of all, which which solution would work best? It is. You know, if we want to have a connection to the uh, Arctic seas, it Narvik or Skibotten or Kirkenes, the the terminus. But also we we need the business side who who argued, okay, this is how much we could benefit. We're ready to invest in this. Uh, the government itself can't do it. It's just too costly unless you can really prove that, okay, it would uh, pay the money back someday. And uh, I would say that if, if I look at places like Oul, which is growing quite a lot, and uh, there is a, a lot of demand on, on experts in different fields, 
Well, so, so businesses, they see that Oulu is, uh, is an excellent place. They, they've got um, workforce there. They've got um, facilities there. They've got cheap uh, electricity there. And I would say, I, I guess it's quite the same as here in Lula. It's. I don't think Facebook came here by accident. Yes. And also, too, uh, also a lot of uh, passionate people really believing in this region. So I think that you have to have strong uh, persons from the city that are really trying to create change. So they worked really hard to get Facebook to come here. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'll go back to, uh, to your question. How can we be more attractive here in the Barents? And that's a big question. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we need to listen to the youngsters. We, we need to invite them. And this is a very good example of good areas. So when you have conferences, invite the youngsters, have them to speech. And uh, so we have to in include them more. Uh, but also, we are, in the Barnes, we have many urban, cool cities. But what are we doing with these small, nice, tiny communities? Uh, and the indigenous people, because that's going to be very exotic in the future. And to, to keep that small places, we need works, we need the youngsters to come back, and, uh, and education. So, so university is good, and we need all these clever minds, and we all, but we also need these hands to work. So we need everything. But I want to also to ask you, 80% of the youngsters are doing okay. They are have in the culture, they are doing sports, they are in the politics, and, and they use a lot of money on that. But what do we do for the 20%? They do nothing. So we have to include them. We have to invite them. And if you are talking about extremism, we have to uh, um, get these people. And that's brick. I will, I will challenge the brick. When you have events, because this 20%, you have to go and tell them, uh, please come to our events, because they don't, they don't stay first in the line. So I, I hope to see many, all kinds of youngsters in the next event. Also, they're not standing first in the line. I'm not sure I agree with you, though. I would be the first one in line. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. Um, do we have any, any questions from the audience? Yes, what's your name, please? Where are you from? Uh, hello, uh, my name is Natalia. I'm coming actually from Russia, the city of Petrozavodsk. Hello, Russian <laughs> guest here. Uh, nice to but, meet you. Uh, yeah, I have been, I moved uh, from Russia to Finland, so I have been living in Oulu for more than 10 years, and now I'm living here. So my, I have created family in Lulio, but uh, just now I'm uh, representing uh, the municipality of Lulio. And uh, we are working actually, uh, working as an um, international coordinator. And uh, we, we are also, of course, discussing this uh, question very much, that uh, how we can attract our city, how we can make our young people to stay here. Because still, the facts are what they are. And we all know that even uh, if we are thinking about the city of Lulu, it's quite a big city, but still students are moving away from here. They are moving away to the southern part. And how to make our cities more attractive? Of course, uh, transport and like log logistic uh, questions, they are very, very important uh, to develop and to think about. But also, I agree with all of you, and now coming back to, to the last discussion about the uh, business attractiveness also of the city. Of course, uh, Facebook, of course, we have been uh, very near uh, to uh, build a battery fabric here in, in, in the city of Lulio. But we, ha we have to uh, make stronger connections uh, between business life and, uh, and the young generation life also. We have to connect them. We have to create uh, different kind of options for them to meet with each other and to hear each other. To our young people, they have to tell what they want, what they want to do, where they want to work, etc. Et 
because what we have been hearing uh, here in the University of Lulio, they are telling to us that, yes, the Stockholm companies, they are just coming and they are telling, okay, here we are, we, we need uh, engineers, come to us, very nice uh, living conditions, etc. So they are attracting them, but we want them to stay here. And we can hear also that our young generation, they want to stay in Norrbotten. And, and not only in Sweden, but in the whole Barents region. So I think we also have to think all together that how we can uh, combine uh, the business life and the uh, young generation life of our students. So it's very important. And actually, we are working on this uh, question uh, together with uh, Lulia Naring Slave companies, etc. And so we, we are trying to force uh, these issues and to help them to stay. So this was my short comment. I couldn't <laughs> see silence actually because it's very, very important. But, but thank you for this occasion. It's, it's really great and especially to, to see such a great big audience. Thank, Thank you, you for taking the opportunity to speak. It's great. Yes, yes. We're really <laughs> happy to hear you. Yes. Um, do you have anything to reply to that? I'd, I'd like to agree on what has been said. Uh, if the question is what comes first, people or business, I would say that uh, people always come first. But what do people need? People need businesses. People need jobs. People need education. People need to be connected, so it all comes together. And a good policy in order to promote a good way of living in, in the Barents area should, of course, include good opportunities to start your own business, good opportunities to take up, up a job, to have, an, to, to have education, to, to work with research, etc., etc. But at the end of the day, uh, no capital in any of our countries could sort of order people to move to Luleå or <laughs> Ulio or, or draft a law saying that young persons should stay there when they have their education ready. No, it's up to the local communities to be as attractive as possible. Uh, we will do our best to give you the best possible opportunities, but to make sure that people really want to live here, that can't be ordered from a capital. Yeah, great response. Uh, I think, however, maybe what you uh, also meant was like the companies need to be more offensive, like uh, like the Stockholm companies, like here we are, we want you, and for the companies in our region to be a little bit more aggressive, yeah, <laughs> more aggressive, <laughs> and with the people to people contact, yes, um, yeah, please, who are you, what's your name? Okay. Yeah, this is on. Uh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> What's your um, name? I'm uh, Jona. Uh, I'm a member of uh, BRIC. And uh, I would like to add something regarding the question and the response. Uh, I think it, what we need to do is create uh, a platform for uh, youth uh, developers and founders where they can go and ask questions to um, successful business owners and uh, such. I am... Um, um, like, when you're a successful business owner in the Barnes region, you can go to this platform and help and answer questions. It will help develop um, the, the businesses for the young um, founders and also uh, improve the economy, of course. Um, I would... Uh, I would much like to go to like a sort of a conference and there could be a website regarding this uh, where it just like a Q&A, you ask questions, you get response um, and uh, on how to develop your business because there are many bright ideas in the uh, Barent uh, region and uh, we, should, we should make all of them successful uh, is what I think. Thank you. That's a really good idea. Anyone volunteer to start this network? <laughs> uh, we have a question in the back, yes? Yeah, hello everyone. I'm, my name is Tura Vairio. I'm the former member of Bryk. And so you're, the, you're a part of the retired crew? Yeah, or uh, <laughs> how do we call it? Maybe better word is alumni. <laughs> alumni, yeah. Retired. That's a more fancy yeah, word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's but your yeah, question? Sorry. Um, we were talking about, I, I want to get back to the railway question, because mm, okay. you all were like quite happy about uh, this idea that we are having a railway from uh, Kirkenes to Rovaniemi, but uh, that actually doesn't answer to our, our question, because that's, that's again north to south 
uh, transportation. That's not the one that we want here. We need the uh, connection between uh, Murmansk and uh, maybe Tromsø or something like that. The, that would be better, I think, and of course Cholula and stuff like this. And uh, we are all already kind of celebrating this uh, new thing, but it's not actually helping us here in the north. It's again helping people in the south and us getting out of here. So basically that's, I think, like shooting yourself in the leg. And uh, I want to also, um, what uh, Hannes Sophie said about BRICS, uh, involvement with the people who are kind of dropouts. There will be always youth that are dropouts and don't want to take part in any like international conferences and stuff like that. That's, that's a huge problem and I faced that in Finland and everywhere else I, I go. There are youth that are not involved and don't want to be involved in this situation. So, so, uh, and there are, like in Finland, there are organizations that are with these young people and try to find them and try to connect them. So it's really something that I don't think Brück is able to do, that we are actually trying to invite people who don't want to come or take any part in this. So it's, I think, more, more or less uh, like local issue than international issue on on brick level but this is about the railway and and about the uh, involvement of the people who are dropouts thanks thank you um, yeah who's who's the you have to fight for it oh, I guess nice. not yes because <laughs> the, the Rovaniemi Kirkenes uh, connection was mentioned I need to point out that uh, that was an example of what people in Helsinki talk when they referring to the Arctic uh, transportation. And uh, number one sort of project at the moment, whether it's going to happen, nobody knows yet. And uh, we also know that the local people are not that interested in it. And so, quite rightly, politicians in Helsinki are asking, why should we build it then? Or should we look at other opportunities? Firstly, I, I, I very much agree with the, with the, with the speaker that uh, there would be other more beneficial projects and, uh, and connections we should invest in. But uh, it just shows you, gives you an idea how we also in Finland, we look, tend to look our country south, north. Uh, Sweden as well, I think. I think, think it's, Maybe uh, it's common in Norway nice too. To, to all Russia our, is so our big, so you have to fly on yes. like this. Yes, both horizontal and vertical. Yeah. But uh, then, on, on, another issue about uh, the young people who are not sort of active and who don't seem keen to to participate in different projects or, or, or programs or youth organizations. I must say that personally I very much sympathize with them because uh, I remember when I was uh, under 20, I, I wasn't interested in, uh, in, in joining politics. And I, I thought that uh, youth organizations uh, who talk about having a change and uh, uh, getting together and giving um, youth voice. I thought that those organizations were, were only for, for rich and beautiful and smart young people. And since I didn't meet any of that criteria, I, I, I thought that's not for me. And um, every time I meet Finnish youth organizations, I, I, I raise up this question and, and ask and challenge them to, to look for, for ways how to attract, how to encourage those people who, who don't, who, are, who may be shy, uh, who may have lots of problems with their personal life, uh, or who, who think that they've got nothing to give. How could you attract those people, get them on board? And uh, 
I'm not sure this is probably not appropriate, but uh, <laughs> uh, a panelist asking the audience. Yeah. But, uh, you can do that. Oh, oh thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. I, I like your style. <laughs> and, uh, it would be very intriguing for me because it, it, it's just, it feels silly. I come, I travel all the way from Helsinki to here and tell my ideas about how this region should be developed. I'd rather hear your analysis and your points of view, what the decisions makers in our capitals should do. Um, but my question uh, I'd like to raise for the for Bruck members is that uh, when you go to your local communities and you meet your friends and your family, uh, fellow students at school, do they understand what you do in your organizations? Or do they see that as a channel how they could improve the life and living standards in their home, home community? I think that's a question that you can all keep in mind, right? Because we all see that everyone who's here is rather committed than not, right? So if you bring this question with you uh, for the rest of the day and maybe think about someone that you know that is not that committed and maybe try to talk to that someone and explain and meet and listen and be curious why, how, when, what do you want? Don't you think? That's a good homework to take from today. I like action so that we don't just sit here and then we move on. So I'd like you to bring that with you for the re maybe the rest of the month, maybe the, the rest of the year. Explain to someone new every day. Huh? Can we do that? Yes. <laughs> and if you want to discuss more with Samuli, you can, of course. Yeah, of course, do that later. Um, I think we have, yes. Oh, I want Katarina first. First, yes. first. Um, uh, regarding the activity, like um, to make us more active, I think that uh, events are a very good approach since it involves a lot of people. You meet a lot of people, you make friends. It's more a social thing than it is like formal because many times um, having a lot of formal events or very like fancy things will um, frighten the youth. Like, they're scared they have to do, like, take responsibility for something. Like, it's enough with school. We don't have, like, I can't take everything. Um, but, um, so to involve us, we need to make events and stuff. Where we also meet older people. But um, an important thing to think about when you're doing events like this, where you <laughs> invite the youth, is to not maybe put it... Uh, on weekdays where people are going to school because I know a lot of people might want to come here and uh, participate but since they go to school they and have tests and stuff like that they can't um, come and be active in these events so putting it on weekends are maybe a better approach to reach out to the youth at least that's a good point did you want to add anyone short addition no very short this is education to go to these conferences so the teacher must understand that because you learn a lot <laughs> to come here that's what we say in trumps that was very short thank you did you want to add something shortly too as well yeah i would like to elaborate a little bit on on keep the, the microphone close the important importance of of including all young people in the the barents region uh, not uh, only in the brick uh, corporation or our uh, formal, yeah, thank you. formal uh, <laughs> arenas. Uh, I think it's a good idea to have more events, to have uh, sports competitions and so on. Has, that's a, has a lower threshold for, uh, uh, for being a part of it. But uh, I think um, Anna Sofia had a, a very relevant point earlier on because uh, as much as one of almost one out of 10 young people uh, do not participate in work, education or training. And how can we reach these youngsters and make them part of education or work life? One out of and 10? You have Sorry. to almost. One, almost one out of 10. Yeah. Yep. And um, what's the reason behind this? 
Well, one reason is, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, speech earlier on, uh, mental health, health problems which affect young people uh, to a large extent. Uh, much of it uh, because of uh, an even more strong pressure on being perfect, on uh, doing well at school, uh, being good in sports, uh, looking good and so on. And I think uh, how the new reality of being young uh, puts a pr pressure on young people is a very important aspect to address. Uh, and also, like I mentioned earlier, too many young people drop out of school. Uh, so they don't have the skills needed to get a job. And how do we help the young people who have already dropped out of school to uh, get those skills and make them uh, available for uh, working life. I think that is two very important aspects that we should address in, this, in, in the framework of this cooperation as well. Um, we have Linus waiting for a question. You have been waiting for quite some time. I think we need to go. Over to you first. All right. It it's not a, yeah. ah. <laughs> Hello, my name is Linus Lundström. I work at the Arctic Research Center at UMI University. So I have a few comments on some of the issues that has been uh, uh, lifted here during the discussions. Uh, first, I was thinking about this, uh, the work at home, uh, study from home idea, which is good and uh, promising, of course. But if people are going to do that, they actually need to have a home environment that they want to live in as well. We need to make sure that services stay in the area, in the communities, that the small communities continue to live. Because you don't want to sit out in the in half abandoned village with no supermarket, no healthcare systems, no school, and work from home. That is not a good living, and that is not a future for youth. If, you, if, you're, going, if you're going to start a family, you want to have the security that you have some place to have your children. If you um, get pregnant and you need to. Uh, you birth somewhere, it can be long travels for that kind of stuff. You need to know that you, your kids can go to school somewhere. This kind of security is very important that we actually preserve, not only in the big urban centers during the coast or wherever they might be, but also in the rural areas of the, of the country. Otherwise, we, we are really abandoning most of the land. Uh, so that's my, my first comment, which I think we have, have kind of missed in this discussion. Uh, and the second one is, as you all, as many of you have mentioned, we have quite strong vertical transportation lines from from the region to the capital in the respective country. But we have very s weak uh, horizontal construct uh, transportation um, corridors. We, you can really argue that the, the regions are not coherent at all. They are a re rather um, you can argue, for example, that Storuman is closer to Stockholm than to Umeå because you take the flight to Stockholm in an hour, but if you take the car, it takes three hours to go to, to Umeå. And that is a really important thing to bring with you when you talk about how to make a, a successful region because if you only have the, the big cities living, that won't actually help. The, 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 the other parts of the region because it's too far away. We have a really big region and we need to accept that and find ways to handle that kind of, of issues. Um, yeah, that's uh, what, uh, what I was what I Thank you. Say. Thank you. Uh, I think that we all agree, like with the transport issue, that uh, a lot of work needs to be done and that's also going to be uh, for a long period of time that we have to work, both with on a political level, um, maybe we live in these regions also need to raise our voices and let the uh, put pressure on the people working in the big cities. Like this is what we need because they cannot guess what the people living here needs. So it goes both ways. It's a responsibility for us as well as for the uh, people making the decisions. Um, I think that we can leave the transport area for now because we have been discussing a lot of uh, transport issues. And I really would like to um, talk about what we actually can do, okay? Because it's, it's easy to talk about, oh, we need this and we need that and this is what I want, but what do we actually need to do 
to achieve those things. Did you have anything to add in, in that when it comes to action? Yeah, I think so. Okay, please. Who um, are you? What's your name? Where are you from? Uh -huh. My name is Polina. I am from Arkhangelsk, from Russia, and I'm a student. And I actually wanted to talk about uh, young people moving from region, from northern region. I know that in Arkhangelsk, at least, in Arkhangelsk region, there are a lot of people who are moving more to the south, and even more people who are willing to do that in the future. And I actually know quite a few who are actually eager to st to stay in the region and to develop it. And yeah, I do believe that the main problem for us is youth unemployment. Mm. And uh, that it's really difficult to find a job, at least in Russia, without the experience, you, it's hard to find a job. And uh, now I'm finishing my bachelor degree in Northern Arctic Federal University. And by myself, I do feel that I don't have enough skills and competencies to work. So. What I actually wanna, what I actually was thinking about, that maybe firms and companies could make more internships in the nurse for people, for students or for graduates, so that maybe we can get some skills and competencies, and then it will be easier for us to find a job in the nurse. And also, I think someone from the speakers talked about work mobility. So I know a lot of programs in education mobility. And uh, I actually took part in one of them, and I was in Norway for half a year for studying. But I'm thinking that maybe creating some internships, like international internships, would be also a great idea. I know the one from the International Burn Secretariat, they have this internship, but maybe more of them will be greater. Yeah, that's all that I have. That's some really good, uh, actually doable things that we can really achieve and, and start doing actually right now. Um, did you want to add something, Tim? Well, there was a uh, question from the audience before about uh, how young business leaders could uh, help each other to inspire and actually do something. Well, there was a project that ended a couple of years, I think one or two years ago, called Barnes Reunion. And uh, I think that is what a good sort of platform for young business uh, uh, people to meet each other to talk about uh, how they have been able to make their business successful in some way. So I would uh, strongly suggest uh, the Joint Working Group on Youth or, or the Regional Council to look into making some sort of uh, conference that can gather young successful uh, business people and maybe not so successful people, so they can meet and talk about the opportunities and the possibilities to make business in the region. There's a lot of uh, opportunities to make business in the region. We have a lot of tech companies, we have oil, we have mining industries. It's one of the richest, it could be one of the richest parts of the world in that case. But uh, we need to find this uh, synergy effect as well. Um, it was a, I know that we have left the transportation <laughs> field, but I have just a small comment or small personal reflection. For me, the mo biggest interest for being involved in the Barnes Corporation was the, uh, or is, the knowledge that we are all fighting the same problems. Even if it's Russia, if it's Finland, or if it's Sweden or, or Norway, we have the same types of issues. And then we have the same types of uh, solutions to it. And I think that the Barnes Corporation could be an excellent uh, motor to find these solutions and really to make a big difference in, well, in the world of politics. We are all fighting urbanization. People are moving, moving from Arkhangelsk to Moscow, from uh, Oulu to Helsinki, from uh, Luleå to Stockholm, and, and, so, and from, of course, Northern Norway to, to Oslo. We all have this same problem. We have the problem with transportation. This makes us equals. And there's a lot of talk about this Barnes identity. Who are we? Well, in that, <laughs> if you look at that way, we are our problems. <laughs> so you feel like a railway. <laughs> no, 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 but, but this unites us. And I think this is uh, one of the key aspects that the Barnes Corporation could really be about. How can we jointly work together to find this solution? Maybe on east and west the transport link will be one of the best solutions so that someone could work in Murmansk and he sell her his or her services there but next day in Kiruna. 
it could be a great opportunity for more transport, for more uh, well cooperation. There's a lot of mining in the Murmansk Oblast. There's a lot of mining in northern Finland, northern Sweden, northern Norway, and uh, we need to use this. Uh, these possibilities in our advantage, I think. And, and uh, if, if there are like young people here, I know that we had some really good um, ideas for projects. Just do it. Find some company, find some adult. We have internet, we have contact information, and do it. Because if you have these ideas, they don't have to be like finished ideas, because once you have an idea and the final product will never be the same as where you started. But don't just sit there and wait for somebody else to do it. That's our responsibility too, to actually do it. Find someone that can help you. You don't have to invent the wheel. Uh, find a mentor, work together, and do it, right? Cross borders, all over. I think that's like, you have to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to add something? Yes, I agree. Like, uh, like Nike, just do it. And we also have this Erasmus <laughs> Plus. Uh, very nice. Yes. Uh, and there is lots of opportunities there. So uh, active youth, go into active youth. They also have courses. You can go and travel for 500 uh, NOC. Uh, and they pay for it the whole week. So you can meet partners in Europe. But I, I want to answer a little bit your question. What can we do? And... I, I, I tell, start early. You need to start early with the kids, with the youngsters. And also, I have to say that I'm really proud of being part of Troms County because they are really good politicians there now. And there's many good employees. My colleagues are really um, interesting in youth. And we have this transportation, and we have this ed education, and culture, uh, and special with this youth... Um, uh, yeah, this youth coordinator and uh, yeah, they take care of. So, and education, as I said, start in kindergarten. You need to start when they're young. And in school, we now have this uh, school board for kids, and we educate them, and then they come up to high schools. They're also including in, um, like we have, I have to know from Troms County, Ungdomens uh, Fylkesråd. And they are collecting like 70 youngsters. And they really got the opportunity. And I'm also proud to be a part of the Barnes. Because lots, and know if you register that Brussels and down there, <laughs> they are now asking, what, what can we do up in the Arctic? And can we start talking together? So, because we have to protect this area. And special, uh, you know, this ice is melting. And so, so there's lots to do. And we need to take care of the kids and learn them and teach them and evolve them, inspire them. And we also need to inspire the teachers. Well, we live in a strange time. Uh, I was thinking about the question from the young woman from Arkhangelsk. Uh, we are living in a time where employers are really screaming higher and higher because they need educated people to hire. At least in Sweden that is the case. At the same time, we have a high unemployment rate for young persons. And very often, uh, the problem is that the education that young persons get is not the kind of education that is needed in order to get a job. The solution is obvious. Make sure that the education system is... Uh, that, that the employers are involved and engaged in the education system. Make sure that we have on-the-job training so that students and, and employers can get to know each other and know what needs they have. So there, we, we live in a strange time, but we also, I think, know quite a lot of what to do. And this is the perfect time if you want to do something about the 10% who are neither in education, training or, or, uh, or, or employment. Because there is a shortage, a lack of, of, uh, of uh, workforce, at least in, in the northern parts of Sweden, the employers are really screaming higher and higher because they need welders, they need plumbers, they need electricians, they need nurses, they need people with education. And at the same time, the 10% of the young persons who, who don't have the right kind of education and can't take up the jobs. So this is the perfect time to be a, a politician. Because if you can make sure that the 10% really get the opportunity to get the kind of education and training and uh, on-the-job training that 
could lead to the first job, could lead to, the, to an opportunity to earn your own living, but also could lead to an opportunity for, for the employer to, to get his, his or her business thriving because business is done by people. So we live in a very special time, but a very exciting time because the business cycle is perfect for making sure that those who are very far from the labor market can come closer. Yeah, and I'm actually, mm, this is just a reflection of mine. So we said that about 10% of the youth, uh, we need to put extra resources to work with them. So how about the rest of the 90 that are already committed, that already want something? Don't we need to feed them as well? Don't you think? So what can we do to make sure, because those 90% might look some other direction if they don't get stimulated where they are. So how can we, like... Of course, we have to take care of that 10% of the youth that uh, might feel outside of the system, whether it's school or commitment or sports or health or friends or whatever. But how can we like, focus also on the other 90% so that they might bring in those other 10%, you know? So if anyone has the revolutionary answer to that, maybe? <laughs> no, but it's an important um, like to, to build our talent fabric. Uh, as you ask, uh, to have these events and to invite these people because it, there is really many talented youngsters in the Barnes, and we need to take care of them. And we um, and we also, if they also have people, and you probably hear that I get a little bit emotion about the youngsters <laughs> who have don't this opportunity because I have seen I have seen these youngsters they don't dare to stay on uh, to talk to speak. But if they got the opportunity, and if we teach them and inspire them, they do go, and they really have a big voice. So we we'll need to listen to them and involve them and include them. And we also see that this, um, uh, what do you call it, kind of, uh, yeah, welfare, uh, they are working now for youngsters under 35. So, because they are, we really need them out there, and, and they also are... Uh, very good employees if they get the chance if they meet the right people and now we are talking about values and we, and we need to talk to, the, to ourselves or parents or grandparents and we also need to get them home the grandparents are still in Spain or something come home mm -hmm. and take care and, the, and that's what we also do now in Norway we have this generation uh, uplifting because there's really many talent there they live to a uh, hundred now and they need to come and help us because you have so many youngsters now, they're struggling. And I also have um, a youngster, he was really bullied in the, in the school. And uh, he, he said to me, and I uh, said, Hannah, I don't know what I have been doing if I haven't been in, in this uh, politician's. Uh, and I said, hmm? What, what? Because you, you were lifting me up. And now he's speaking as, yeah, a really good Barnes kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we have been talking for quite some time. We have been talking a lot about transport, uh, railway, possibilities. Uh, we've been talking some about education, a lot about business, what comes first, work or people, people or work. We've also got some really great ideas from the audience, how to continue to develop. I'm talking about you. You're going to find someone in a big company and start your idea. Start that network, like a Facebook page. Good. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot more in this uh, beautiful region. We have the environment, we have the nature, we have the tourism, we have stress issues. Uh, we see with the mental health that you were talking about. That's also a very big question. And I think that we are going to round this up now. Uh, we all need to get moving and get shaking because you also have all lunch and after lunch to continue to discuss these three uh, issues, economy, environment, and socially. Um, I would, however, love to hear like a final word from every one of you. Just a short sentence, uh, anything that you want, like is truly important for the youth perspective for the future. Yep, you want? Oh yeah, sorry, you have probably been waving like forever. Go. Um, it's not as much as a question, but more like a comment, a uh, statement. That's uh, perfect. She, she took my question, the lovely lady down the road. <laughs> uh, I was thinking about internship. Who are you? What's your name? Uh, you my from? name is Linnea. Uh, I'm from Boden originally, the yeah. town next to here. 
Uh, I'm a part of the Regional Youth Council as well. Uh, I really want to press on this internship idea because I really think that it is very valuable. And I think that we think too little about how valuable it can be. Because most of my friends or people I know my age say that, oh, I can't, I can't get a job no matter how my education is because I do not have the 30 year experience they want me to have because I'm only 16. <laughs> um, so I do think that starting internships for maybe even as low as the eighth grade would be very good. Maybe not full-time internships, but maybe once a week, twice a week. And then it gets higher the, the, the older you get. So you get out into the work life much easier than, than for us graduating now. Like, well, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. And then I also got stuck a bit on what you said, Anna Sofia, right? Yeah, thank you. Um, about teachers need to understand that this is education too, because I know that my teachers does not think that this is education. So that is something we could think about. So you're skipping class right now? I skipped a test. <laughs> a test that I will probably have to do during a holiday next, but it's worth it. That sounds great. We're happy that you're here. Really happy. <laughs> that was a good final word from the youth in the audience. And uh, please. You seem very ready to share some final words about the youth perspective for the future in our region. Yes, one thing that hasn't been mentioned yet, I think, is the importance of educating future business owners and entrepreneurs. I don't know how it works in Russia or Sweden or Norway, but at least in Finland, uh, we tend to be quite pessimistic, as you all know. and. Uh, and in our high schools, in our universities, at least when I was there some, some 10, 15 years ago, your, student, your teachers were not really encouraging you to, to establish your own business, uh, to seek a career as a, as a business owner. And, but that's... I hope that is changing gradually, step by step, also in my own country. That, uh, and I hope that that's something the local schools here in the Barents region could uh, invest in more, uh, could see valuable. Because I'm, I believe that if you've got a young, uh, young person here in Lulao living here, and they're going to establish a business. They would, if they love this community and if they love being here in this region, they, they most probably want to want their business here as well, and they want to hire local people, someone they know, and sometimes someone who shared their identity, someone to share share their affection for this area, and. Uh, when we look at the, uh, today's employment statistics, we can see that it's the medium, small and medium-sized businesses which are growing and um, hiring more people instead of uh, big global uh, businesses. So I, I hope... To summarize? That, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that Business was just, entrepreneurs. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Earlier, Let's support it. To make it yes. Barron's region even more vibrant, uh, attractive, to live um, prosper. Thank you. Huh? More young voices. What, what's on your mind? Who are you? What's your name? Hey, my name is Mats Superdition. I'm here on behalf of Finnmark Youth Control. Yeah. Uh, but I do have many hats. Uh, I'm a lo like I'm a young entrepreneur. Oh, nice. I do own uh, my own production company. I specialize in visual communication. So last night I took some photos because I always have my camera with me. But I see what we are talking about. My company is based in Alta in Finnmark. And it's really interesting to use the social, social media and stuff to promote my business. Uh, most of my clients is based in Oslo, the capital of Norway. I work with uh, uh, the music industry with uh, major labels like Warner Music and Sony and stuff like that. So one of my biggest clients is a touring artist in Norway. 
So I'm out uh, on tour almost every weekend. <laughs> I've been out traveling from Finnmark. Uh, Oslo is two hours with it's a two hour flight from Alta. So it's pretty central. So I can have this job while living in Barnes. It's super interesting. That's a really great example. Yeah. Yes. And I'm my second year at upper secondary school too. Wow. But my school will not like they are not seeing the value of my work. So it's uh, I think it's a little bit difficult to run a business and also go to school. They're not compensating. I have to take tests like her on <laughs> other days and yeah. but they have managed to collaborate with me. I have started collaborating with them and I said, I'm going to do this anyway because this is my wish and what I believe in because I love my job and what I do because I can create unique things and represent brands and persons I like and want to work with. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. That's a great example of what you were talking about and how also uh, we have to be better at communicating. Like maybe the school doesn't understand, so we have to talk, be more efficient, tell, be, talk more. <laughs> Sometimes we think that this is all in my head, you should understand, but if we don't say it, nobody would ever, will ever understand. So, uh, thank you. Uh, moving on. Something short? Yeah, I'll be short. And sharp? Uh, like I said in my speech, we're uh, establishing a youth panel in uh, Norway, and I think this has been a great demonstration that uh, why we need uh, a youth panel, and we need young voices. Uh, the next 25 years of the Barents Corporation, it's up to you, uh, young people today, to push the corporation forward. And I hope that you will continue to, be, to engage in the corporation, continue to be curious, continue to meet each other even more often, and continue to, to be proud of yourself and of the Barents region. Thank you. I will try to be short. Any short, um, yeah, exactly. Short and sharp, I like we that. We saw free Barents for youth. That would be, I know the, the youngster wants that. And they also talk about Barents University. You can make it in cyber. Uh, because they can pick the teachers and the, who is uh, doing the best class. And because we have many good universities here, but they can also be staying in small places. But I, um, my message to um, everyone here, ministers, decision makers, participants, and brickers, encourage young people, encourage work and cooperation between regions and across borders. And let their voice be heard, listen to them, discuss and address the issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. Katarina? Well, uh, I'm also going to keep it short because I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reason. Uh, but yeah, I just want to uh, put the importance on the technology and also the social bonds that we get from these events. Pretty much. Thank you. Well, uh, going forward 25 years uh, into the future, I think that the most key of Barnes uh, Corporation is people-to-people -people contacts. How can you start a business with someone you didn't have even met? I think it's an extremely important that we are still able to travel to other countries and do it on, uh, with some financial uh, support as well. So I think that uh, going forward with this, the people to people has to be continued and has to be strengthened because then relationships will form across the borders and relationships might mean businesses and then you might want to stay in the Barnes region more. So for me, it's the continued support of the people to people aspect of the Barnes Corporation. Well, thank you. This has been a very interesting discussion because we started by talking about the need for the, the success of the Barons Cooperation being the people-to-people -people connection cross borders. And then we continued talking about the need for transportation cross borders. But you, young persons, have forced us to discuss also uh, the need to communicate within our countries, the need to communicate and have uh, less borders between younger and older, between decision makers and, and, and the youth voice, but also uh, 
uh, we've been forced to discuss uh, how well we communicate with, for, for instance, with trains within our uh, different countries, how well we communicate between education system and business, how well we communicate when it comes to taking down borders between unemployed and, and those who could employ. So thank you very much for forcing us to discuss what's really important for young persons, namely the possibilities to get a job, the possibilities to get an education, the possibilities to communicate. Thank you. Audrone? As opposed to my colleague from Finland, I'm very optimistic. And I think there are a number of opportunities that do exist for young people. You just need to be active and to try and to go out, and not only locally or regionally, but also on the European scale. And I already mentioned some projects and programs like Erasmus Plus Horizon 2020. Europe, etc. But talking about internship, there is an internship program also in all the, all the European institutions. We have interns. I have interns in my division like almost throughout the year and they are, they are bringing incredible added value and some of my former interns are flying very high. So I'd like to encourage you, come to Brussels, join, have the six months old internship and come back to Barents uh, region and make it flourish. So that's my last word. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Malin. <clears throat> so, in conclusion, I would like to pay tribute once again to the uh, Swedish chairmanship of the BIAC for putting these uh, uh, youth uh, issues in the focus of uh, their chairmanship program, because it's really what we need uh, for the future of our uh, Barents region. And I also belong to the optimists uh, um, about the prospects uh, of the uh, Barents region, because I have, uh, our region has everything to be uh, one of the most successful, highly developed and innovative regions in Europe. So we have the highest density of population in the bigger Arctic, so we have Barents region. We have uh, 5.2 million people living in the region. We have enormous, really huge uh, natural resources. We have a very good uh, scientific and research potential, and uh, uh, we also have an absolutely unique uh, uh, experience of cross-border and trans-border cooperation which makes our council unique in comparison with other regional forms of cooperation. So we are in the same boat, and what is more important, we are rowing in the same direction. So I think we uh, could uh, hope for a bright future for our cooperation. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been such an interesting, uh, such an interesting panel. From the, your left is uh, Sergei Petrovich. He's a senior official of the Committee of the Barnes Euro Arctic uh, Council. We have Audrone Perkowskiene, maybe? Did I nail it? Sort of. Uh, uh, from the European External Action Service. We also have uh, Minister Anna Ekström from Sweden, youth minister, among other things. Tim Andersson, chair of Barnes Press and uh, the recent chair of Barnes Regional Youth Council, Katarina Lindmark. The youth, you know, I don't have to say anything else. <laughs> uh, we also have Hannes Sofia Roaldsen, co chair of the joint working group, uh, Tom Erland Skaug, state secretary from Finland, and Samuli Virtanen, state secretary from no, Norway and Finland. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much for all your thoughts. Me and Lisa would like to give you a little present uh, before you leave, something that uh, makes you think about the North. Uh, for a little bit longer than when we depart. So, if you please, uh, we can leave the stage and you can have a little something. And I'm just going to explain to you what's going to happen during lunch and then you can grab your lunches. So, just give me a few more minutes. Thank you so much. We can uh, give them some applause. Yeah, thank you. That's nice. I would like the reporters and the group leaders for the lunch to uh, come to me. <coughs> oh, sorry. So, how are you? How are you? How's the energy level? Huh? <laughs> Up here and down here at the same time. So we're ready for lunch, and for lunch, uh, the discussion will continue. Uh, as you know, you have already been divided into three different groups, and the three different groups will discuss different subjects. Uh, we have the blue team, uh, Focus on Economy, and with you, you have Andreas Lind uh, as a, a group leader, 
and Yuan Bailon as a reporter. Uh, we also have the green team that focuses on environment. The leader is Ilona Mettiainen, and the reporter is Eleanor Bomark. And then we also have the red team. Where are you? Oh, there. <laughs> Making an entrance uh, with the leader Peter Scheld and Linus Lundström is the reporter. Um, for lunch, you will have something called Norlensk salad, uh, smoked salmon, potato salad, broccoli, cocktail tomatoes, uh, arju gula, rucola, uh, baked egg, pickled red onion, and a fresh mustard cream. Mmm, sounds delicious, right? Uh, any of you with the special needs for the food, you can find it just downstairs where we had dinner yesterday. So if you're a vegetarian or if you have any other allergies and stuff, you can go there. So. So many cards here. The blue team, um, economy. They will. You will take your group to the room called Olga Bard, and you have your food station just outside there. So you can please bring your blue group and go. Uh, the green team that focuses on environment. Um, they will take you to a room called Hengnan. That is upstairs. You know where to go. Good. Perfect. So the green team will go with Eleanor and. Uh, Ilona, and the red team can just stay here for a second. Enjoy your lunch. Be curious. Yeah, you can go and lead the green group. group. <laughs> so the red team, uh, you will actually stay here, but we need you to uh, get out for like 10 minutes so that we can clear the room and rearrange it with some tables and stuff. And then the staff will let you know when you can come back in. And the same is when you are finished with your lunch. So five minutes to two, I would like you to leave the room so that we can clear it and then get back here on time. Okay? So even though you will be uh, eating here and, during, and leading the discussion here, we all need to move and then we can come back. And uh, make sure you bring your belongings.